in the world of a small business owner that will potentially never happen in our lives ever again. You the fucking suck. <laughs> a lot of painful phone calls. Regular milk's okay? That'd be great. That the world is falling apart. Get the fuck out of here. All right guys, today's episode is about what it's like to be a small business owner in today's crazy, crazy times that we're living in right now. So you guys are gonna get to hang out with me th for the day. We're gonna be in my house a little bit. We're gonna go to the coffee shop. We're gonna talk to my mom. We're gonna talk to some gym members, some employees. We're gonna get some some voice memos from some people. And it's, it's something that you guys are genuinely gonna feel. You're gonna feel what it's like to be a small business owner right now if you're not currently. You're gonna understand what this is like for small business owners and fitness entrepreneurs and, and different people. This is, um, this is, this is a time that we may never see again. And it's a, it's, a, it's a time where you can, you know, really, really fall into the trenches with it, or you can figure out a way to squeeze some lemonade out of some lemons and, and create some new stuff for yourself and learn some new things and broaden your horizons. So without any further ado, you guys are about to laugh. You guys are about to be stressed out. You guys are about to just have a good time hanging out with me because I know you guys love to. And let's do it. Guys, it's so hard to believe that the world is falling apart. But it's this beautiful outside. All right, guys. I just live across the street here. And we're gonna go to the coffee shop, which is about 400 meters away, 200 meters, maybe 200, maybe 100. It's really, really close, but I'd like to just kind of show you guys, you know, my hood. It's not a hood at all, but <laughs> show you where I live. And then we're going to talk about kind of what's going on in the world right now. It's crazy. And um, there's a lot going on in my life because I own a small business and a lot of small businesses are getting absolutely crushed right now. And there's a lot of things that you guys can still do, whether you're a fitness entrepreneur, you're a gym owner, or you're someone in the space who just wants to figure out how to get the best workouts in possible. We're gonna go over all that stuff today. You guys are also gonna see what my life looks like right now because it's a little hectic. And um, yeah, let's do it at the coffee shop. So this is normally one of my favorite areas. It's normally pretty crowded. And as you can see, there's one person. <laughs> Plus me, two. Reserved for you. Get out of here. Of course. <laughs> Listen, oh, with the gloves too. I like it. I like it. Global pandemic and everything. Regular milk's okay. That'd be great. I love sure. that you guys are still open though. Thank you. Dude, we're trying to make it work for you. Um, you doing Apple Pay today? Yeah. All right. like definitive so I know that we still like if we want to stay open we kind of can but like it's obviously shitty but we obviously have bills to pay it's fucking scary yeah I mean even if we have half the people stay on it's, it helps versus just being completely shut down no exceptions no one is let in there before seven o'clock doesn't matter if you have a key or not you can also check out a set of dumbbells or a kettlebell or like other shit like like a wall ball or bands or something like that and everything has to be brought back within like a two to three hour window so yeah this is a insane time right now this is uh probably a time in the in the world of a small business owner that will potentially never happen in our lives ever again and the city is telling everybody to shut their doors, but fuck, like I have such a hard time accepting this because you have 50 people in a grocery store, but you can't have 10 people in a gym. So, I mean, I wanna do the best thing I can to keep as many members 
staying active as possible. You know, we have a lot of people that are freezing their memberships or putting them on hold or canceling and it's actually kind of sad because this is like a community of people and we're supposed to stay, stand together and stay together. And obviously they know by being in the masses doing this that you're actually potentially putting your, your favorite place to go throughout the day out of business. And I feel like this is one of those times where you should be supporting your small businesses. But regardless, what I'm gonna be doing is for the gym is keeping like open gym hours. People can come in and work out 10, 10 people or less throughout the day. We'll be like one of the only gyms in town that will actually be open. We're not actually having classes, so I don't want you guys to think that we're doing something that we're not supposed to be doing, but we're just keeping it at that 10 or less mark. And then I'm also gonna let people take equipment home and work out with it and bring it back. It's really all I can do to kind of, you know, help the burden. <laughs> I have $40,000 a month in bills uh, for the gym. Just like rent alone is like $11,000. And there's a bunch of other expenses that I'm not gonna call and freeze. I'm not gonna call and freeze the, the gym software and freeze all these other little things. So, yeah, it's stressful for sure. <laughs> and yeah, I, I, have, I have other businesses that will keep me alive, but my, my main concern is my, my coaches. My coaches don't make a lot of money, you know? You, for lo a lot of you guys out there who do personal training or you've ever coached for a gym, you don't make a lot of money. Like this is a scary, scary time for them. And they're at home, like, you know, not making nearly as much money, stressing out about bills. And my goal is to be able to pay them. If, if even though I'm not having classes, if I could just at least have as many people stay on board as possible, I can give them whatever they would normally be making, you know, and then it wouldn't be as gnarly stressful for them. So that's my goal. That's like what I'm really thinking about. That's what I'm worried about is worried about my, my coaches, worried about the future of the gym, stuff like that. You know, there's other restaurants and other people that are dealing with kind of the same things, but at least they can still do like takeout and different things like that. We can't really do that stuff, you know? All we can really do is provide at-home workouts for free um, or, you know, take some stuff home and, and this and that, but we're just hoping that people stay on and do the right thing and help us out. So the whole day today is gonna be a bunch of phone calls, a bunch of figuring out what to do, and a lot of running around, and a lot of painful phone calls. <laughs> a lot of painful text messages, a lot of painful calls with my employees. I'm talking to my manager every fucking five minutes. So yeah, I think it'd be dope if you can make a really sick workout with bands only every day. Um, just trying to figure out what the call is and so-and-so said this and you know this and that and it's a lot of drama but what are you gonna do <laughs> gotta keep on keeping on and we're gonna uh we're, we're gonna see where this day takes us and you guys will be with me the whole day so let's do it all right guys so this is my favorite place to be this is uh lido marina village obviously live like right here and it's obviously very very beautiful and it's um it's one of my favorite walks to do when I need to think about some stuff. And there's a lot of places to sit, there's a lot of places to kind of hang out and catch a vibe. It's a stressful time right now, so <laughs> this is much needed, much needed. It's like fantasy land. <laughs> there's not many places that look like this. Look at the Lido. Um, since I do have another job, I was wondering if I could um, give my, I'm like happy to give, uh, I mean not like happy, but you know, I'm more than willing to give my hours away uh, at the gym to coaches or other people who don't have another job. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I was okay with you. I don't really know what hours will look like, but um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I was okay with you before I offered it to others. So yeah, <laughs> the good thing is most of the employees of the gym are all coming together and kind of helping each other out. You know, we have, we have some employees who have significant others that can take care of them and it's not a big deal, but we have other employees who absolutely need a paycheck. So like that's like how this is affecting everybody and how it's like, it's so important to me to be able to like still provide some sort of service. 
So yeah, I'm catching some heat for keeping the gym open in any aspect, but I'm also catching a lot of love as well. So I think a lot of people need to realize that like, no matter what you do, there's always gonna be someone that has something negative to say about it. And then there's, there's typically a greater number of people that are really, really happy for you and excited for you and wanna support you. So the hardest thing that we can do right now as people that are in social media or people that are managers or owners of a facility is to just let that, that little bit of negativity go because if you concentrate on that one little negative thing, your world's gonna fall apart really, really fast. And it's completely unnecessary because you're actually making so many other people's lives that much better. And if you can focus on that, it's gonna make all the difference for you and the way you feel for the day and the way that you carry yourself throughout the week and the month and the year and just in general. So my daily little morning cocktail is this thing called Super Lysine. You can buy this anywhere. It's like, it's literally everywhere. There's no, uh, there's no plug on that. And then I do take the first warm reds and the greens. Um, I am sponsored by them, so there is, you know, some biasness with them, but I do really like their stuff. And if you put the two together, it tastes great. And you're getting all the vitamins and minerals and all the things that are gonna help you increase your immune system and combat any sort of illness. And also I take the multivitamin. And this is first form as well. A lot of good stuff in there. Kind of doubling up on some of this, but I would rather take it than not take it. And then in reality, there's a very high likelihood that we're all going to get sick at some point. Like this thing is spreading. So the best thing you can do for yourself right now is to keep your immune system high. Keep working out, stay active. And then also take your vitamins. Take your vitamins, stay active, stay healthy, stay fit, you know? Important stuff. But well, this is a worldwide crisis. You don't do this to innocent people. Yeah, it's fucked up to just buy all the toilet paper and not sell it to anybody. That woman this morning sold those four rolls of toilet paper for $910. Get the fuck out of here. I really should think about selling a toilet paper for fucking rent. Yeah, and if anybody knew it was you, they fucking never talk to you. Wow. Yeah. I but love that you said she had the balls to charge $4.50 for shipping. Can you imagine? You charged $910 for four rolls of shitty Scott fucking paper, toilet paper, and then you got the balls to charge the motherfucker $4.50. <laughs> Oh, I'm crying. Oh my god. I sent it to you, didn't I? In that group text, would it Yeah, but it was at it was at 300 and something. It wasn't at 800 or 900. No, it's 910. dollars Look at it. All right. Well, I have I have 200 and like 50 rolls at the gym. I know, but I don't want to take from the gym. Yeah. Because you may have a problem getting it, Ryan. You really may. Yeah. I mean, it's worldwide. People can't get fucking toilet paper. You probably lucked out because you're a business owner. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If you could get, send me a case, it'd be great. I mean, look, I don't like shitty toilet paper, but I'll take fucking anything I could get before I use a fucking sock. <laughs> <laughs> you're just going to have to, every time you take a shit, just immediately go into the shower. <laughs> no way in hell. You'll be really clean every single day. You're taking seven showers a day. Look, I'm not doing that. Fucking dingleberries hanging down as I'm getting in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to get back. I get the picture of the, the, the guy you said with his dick hanging out. <laughs> Five minutes later, I get one from Steven with a black guy with this big dick. I said, what's with my fucking son sending me this crazy shit? <laughs> Oh God. All right, well, so, stay anyway, safe. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, love you. Love you, bye. bye. That was gold. Gold. That's Mama Fish right there. She's out of her fucking mind. I love her. <laughs> At least you know where it comes from now.